We want to see you all over on YouTube, so check us out at Backyard Gardens TV to watch our podcasts and other gardening videos. All right, gardeners, we're ready. We are here to help you. We're going to talk about food securities again today, but we are going to talk about what we can do now to prepare ourselves and to make our food more secure right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We are your hosts, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, where we learn to grow and grow for change. If you absolutely love our show, which I know you do because you're here, we're here to help you and you can help us in three ways. One, you can join Patreon, get two extra episodes a month, and you can sign up for a year and get 10% off. You can simply watch YouTube, Backyard Gardens TV, or you can check out all our t-shirts and stuff. All those links are below, so please come check them out and help support us as we continue to make this content for all gardeners everywhere. All right, food securities. Um... We In the last episode, we gave you a little bit of homework, and if you haven't done so, you should do so. We gave you a movie to watch, and it's called Soylent Green, S-O-Y-L-E-N-T Green. And there's a website. If you want to find it for free, just Google SoylentGreenArchive.org, and then you can watch it completely free. It's a uh, disclaimer. Two disclaimers. One, we don't agree with everything that is stated in the movie, particularly the furniture part. And then two, it's an old movie, all right? So it was filmed in 1973, and it's, Batavia, what do you, is it tough to watch? Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it, so spoiler, I watched the first Superman as in, a, like, in the 90s, maybe even the early 2000s, so well after the movies had come out, and... This had to be in the 90s. So one of my best girlfriends brought over the, the DVD or the VHS tape. She's like, you got to watch it. You know how it goes. Like, sit down. We're going to sit here all day. You're going to watch it. And I'm just like, dude, I could see the string. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? So the idea of watching something kind of out of context from a, you know, decades and decades later. Uh, let's just say that the topics have aged well. Right. However, the filming, maybe not so much. Yeah, it's it's an oldie, but it, it's a goodie. And it really applies to all this. So this <coughs> these episodes, I mean, spoiler alert all the way. We're going to spill the beans. So if you haven't watched it and you want to, we suggest that you watch it and come back because it heavily influences the conversation here mm -hmm. because it was um, it takes place in the year 2022. Oh, my God. Let me move all of this crap so I can get to the bail. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it takes place in the year 2022 in New York City with a population of 40 million people. Um, currently, there's 8 million people in New York City, so they were a little bit off. But in the first five minutes, they basically wrap up everything that we discuss right now. Wouldn't you say? I do. I was just looking back to see what the population was and... Um, in 1973. So wow. they, they say, you know, um, overpopulation, greenhouse gases, droughts, climate change, um, all these things. So does any of that ring a bell for anybody? I mean, <laughs> droughts, check. Mm -hmm. Climate change, check. Overpopulation, I don't know. I don't know how to call it. I know depending on where you live, if you live in a big city, you could say so. If you live in the country, you're probably like, hell no, that's good. I ain't got nobody around me for miles. So there's that. There, but, I mean, there is the prediction, though, in current today and in, in, in recent years, there's been a prediction by 20XX, you know, we're going to have more people than we have resources for. So right. one could argue that. This has been the prediction for now 50 some years and it hasn't come to fruition. One could argue that we just ain't got there yet. Yeah. So in the movie, they discuss um, eating a jar of um, uh, strawberry jam and they said it was five thousand dollars a jar. I believe no, it was yeah. $150 a jar. Was it one hundred and fifty? Yeah. But okay. that tells you how 
um, strap people were for monies. Yeah. You know, like one, obviously that's, that's like some of these, uh, you know, transplant prices, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriousness, like $150, if you needed to make $150 happen, you could probably make $150 happen. But the idea is, would you ever spend it on a jar of strawberries? Yeah. And the reality is today, no. But I mean, it's just, it's, there, there are bits and pieces that kind of really do a good job in just a scene or two um, showing you um, the level of desperation that is everyday life. Yeah. You know, in this in this movie. Yeah. So Charlton Heston stars in it, which I don't know a whole lot about. I'm going to I know he was in Ben Hur and all that, but I just I knew the name. I knew he was a really big actor. But in the 70s movies, you know, they're hard to watch. But. He was, I would, what would you think? Probably in his 50s in the movie? Like, yeah, it, I think they, they were portraying him in his 50s. I didn't do the math to see, right. you know. Yeah, that's he, about right because he was born in 23. So, yeah, so if the movie was released in 73, he was actually 50 years old. Yeah. When it was released. And so I think he they, had, they, that was, that's what they wanted to portray him as, you know. Yeah, because if they wanted to look young, they didn't do a good job. But there's that. <laughs> but I mean, he, he had never seen a flower, he'd never seen a wild animal. Uh, he'd never seen a strawberry. He he was a cop. There was a murder. He went to go investigate the murder. And at the same time as investigating the murder, he stole a bunch of stuff from the rich people. Mm-hmm. Food, mm-hmm. Uh, a bottle of liquor. They had just gone and bought some super special ingredient called beef. <laughs> and he took it home. And he had this old gentleman working with him who was... Um, he, he basically looked up like stuff for crimes and whatnot, did all the research. And he was older. And um, he he cried when he saw a piece of celery. And not only was it a piece of celery, but it was the nastiest piece of celery you ever seen in your whole life. And he yeah. just cried. And it, it just it, it's crazy to think about how like he had that memory of a child of eating a vegetable and, you know, seeing them and never seeing them. Now, you know, at this point, they're um, this is where the Calvary came in. And the government was giving them Soylent wafers. So wafers made out of different ingredients. I'm going to leave that to, you know, you guys got to watch the movie to see what Soylent Green is. But it was it was very telling. And the fact that the police, which he seemed to me in the movie like he was a good cop. Mm-hmm. But then he would go investigate and then he would steal from it. And there was a young lady that lived at... The, this is the part that is not in line with the views of the Backyard Gardens podcast, to be clear. There's a young lady that, quote-unquote, lived at the apartment, but she was called Furniture. So, she was basically, like, I don't want to say a couch, but you have to think about it like that in the view of the movie. And... As people he, moved in and out, she remained, and she was... Um, at their beck and call, let's say, right. you know, whoever the new tenant was for that particular apartment. And it wasn't always sexual, just for the record. You know, sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. Depends on the tenant. But um, so that's just kind of sets the stage for how in the 70s they were looking into the future. So you look you fast forward 49 years, I think it is. Did I do the math correct? Yeah, 49 years. So um, you fast forward to that and they still have that same view. You know, we not of the women, but, you know, of greenhouse gases, food scarcity and stuff like that. And as we talk about these food scares, if you listen to the ad- last episode, you know why um, the definition of it, which I actually still have it pulled up on my computer. So I will give you the brief definition of it. Um, it's defined as by the United Nations Committee of World Food Security means that all people at all times have physical and social and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food that meets their food preferences and dietary needs for an active and healthy lifestyle. So that's what a food security is. And as we move forward, we can see things unfolding that could threaten our food security. Let's put it that way. Right. And then as gardeners could affect us. Right. So I'm going to read if you go to the site that 
been recommended there are only a handful of uh, comments or reviews and as you can imagine it is kind of right with you know kind of political takes on views and that's not a place that we uh, sit in and lounge in on this show and it's very intentional Um, so you may you'll hear a bit of this but I think it's just applicable no matter who sits in you know the big chair in the White House so I'm going to read this comment Um, this is from a reviewer she says I she or he says I love watching this movie before 2020 I thought it was a mystery science fiction right (laughs) but seeing characters wearing masks everywhere and high inflation and food shortages and overreaching government now i see it as science nonfiction. and then comments on great acting from some of the actors Um, and i think that unfortunately for us a lot of times we need to experience a piece of it to really really connect with it you know and my guess is based on this that this person had watched this movie or at least heard about it before we kind of entered into these last couple of years Um, and my view on these things has always been it may not get to kind of whatever the end zone is for you know whatever the prediction is we may not get there but the road there and before we kind of right size um it can be really dangerous and scary and you know um you know hurtful and impactful you know so the reason another reason why i'm enjoying this series and i think it's really about and this sounds cliche it's really about starting the conversation yeah right you know um i think it's important because you know, you wonder what the response was from that the movie in 73, 74, like what people were saying and doing. And did they just take it as some, one more movie that was produced? Right. Um, like 50 years ahead, that that, ne- that would never happen. I, I'm curious about that. Um, and you look now and you kind of think. So this could have been released yesterday, basically, and pushed out another X number of years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. I mean, fortunately, the uh, cinematography would have been better, you know, but yeah. all in all, the storyline could have been pretty consistent, you know. It could have been. And it's, um, you know, I think the reason why it's so applicable to us, and, and I'm very proud of the way I used that word just there. It came off my tongue right. Usually I get stumbled on it. So I'm happy Nicely about done. that. But, um, you know, it was in the first five minutes when he was like, you know, he, he labeled all of the issues that they're confronting. And that's a big thing is. There wasn't just one issue. It was a bunch of different issues that combined Mm -hmm. together. And they even state in the movie, um, the furniture, which I don't even think she has a name. So we're going to have to refer to her as the furniture said, um, you know, why don't you go to another town? And he's like, I can't. It's all the same everywhere in the world. It's all the same. And I'm so, going to go ahead and say we'll refer to her as the young lady. Let's okay. do that. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Because I don't <laughs> I feel very inappropriate yeah. calling her the furniture. So. Yeah. The young lady was like, you know, go somewhere else. He's like, well, everything's the same everywhere. And I think, you know, depending on what country or what part of the world you're in, you may see something earlier than others. But eventually across the board, you will see some form of this take shape Mm -hmm. there were even in some portions comments around and just for the record we're about 10 ish minutes in to this episode the full episode isn't going to be kind of our review of the movie so don't worry stick around but there is some good you know here um but there is um some mention and it was subtle about you know kind of um um the control over farms right you know the government or whatever the um you know governing body was in this movie you know in this future state um and and how you know there is it's very intentional to kind of control things so they can manage things like rations and yada 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 you know and so you know depending on who you talk to a lot of that's been in place for a lot of decades you know, yeah. paying farmers to not grow certain things, right? You know, hashtag subsidies, you know, so. Well, and um, let's let's talk about farmers real quick as we begin to slowly transition over to the main topic. So I was, um, that's funny how this works and it's not a coincidence. Just before we came on here, I was doing a little bit of scrolling and I found an interesting um, piece of knowledge where, They were saying that, you know, in the last episode, we talked about how Ukraine makes, I don't remember, like 70% of the world's wheat or something. But apparently, 
between Ukraine and Russia, a big portion of our fertilizer comes from there. Okay, now we're talking about gardeners being affected. Okay, so with the prices of fertilizer going up by almost 300% this year, we have farmers saying it's not worth it to grow. Mm. Right? Because mm-hmm. inflation is so high that people, you know, aren't willing to pay the prices for, you know, insert whatever vegetable they're growing. Mostly it's corn and stuff like that. So they switch from corn to soybeans. But soybeans, which a lot of our, if you shop in the middle of the grocery store, you're eating a lot of soybeans. Mm -hmm. And soybeans at the same time are very hard to come by right now because it's hard to get the seed. So I can attest to that. Um, And this is on an extremely small scale, but I was looking for another pack of soybean seeds to put, or, you know, edamame, which is even the same kind of soybean. And a lot of places were sold out of them. They didn't have them. I, I don't know. It may be a coincidence, whatever. But, you know, in my mind right now, I'm going to say that it wasn't a coincidence. Um, so people are starting to grow that instead of corn. So you can put what you want there. But there's, you know, there's more effects of what happens on the other side of the world that mm-hmm. kind of brings the wave all the way over. Yeah. And so in 2020, when COVID happened, I think everybody remembers um, nobody went to restaurants. And so the interesting enough to me, because people weren't going to restaurants specifically, the farmers started destroying their crops because they couldn't sell them. And that was just because we couldn't go to the restaurants. Mm-hmm, like we physically mm-hmm. couldn't go now, yeah, there was, but there were restaurants. There was also, I remember a, a, only for like a blink of an eye reporting on this. And it was, you know, kind of think about school systems. So think about the U.S. That was in the particular, other thing, yeah. you know, and how many school systems and for those school systems, um, where that food and the dairy, the milk and so on come from. And you had, you know, across the U.S., so many schools that were closed for so long. Right now, of course, there were some uh Um, states, some cities, some counties, you know, that had like food pickup, but it wasn't at the volume that, you know, these um, sellers were providing this food and and things. So um, it was a a huge impact. And I remember again, just a split second now, take that for what it's worth, a split second that that was reported on. Well, and that's something that I, I wanted to bring up and I didn't know how to weave it in, but now you said it. So if we go back to my fertilizer intel that I gave you, and then you go back to what Batavia just said about how you d- heard it for a split second. And I heard about, you know, they were destroying like squash crops was one that specifically heard and dumping gallons of milk. And um, I even and this last research I did, they were um, people were actually euthanizing their cows mm. because they couldn't sell them, which is atrocious. But OK, we're going to move on from that. Um if you don't hear it from the news, doesn't mean that it's not happening. The Come news, on, somebody. The news only reports what sells. So remember that. So just because you hear one thing, if you want to be informed, dig a little deeper. You can't count on us. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, but we'll try. But you can't <laughs> count on us. But they only report on what's going to sell. So and every now and again, we'll get maybe an unpopular topics. It's not sex and sizzle. It's not blood and gore. And then you don't see follow up on that. You know, they they go back to the tried and true. Um, But don't let that one kind of that one story, 30 seconds, don't lose that, you know, screenshot it, take a quick video of it, you know, file a note in your head and your phone and your notebook to look into that further, you know, because that's almost the gift that, you know, ultimately right. they didn't want to give. Well, see, and that's the thing, too, about the time that we're living in now is you can't hide stuff anymore, man. It's going to get out. Somebody's going to get a whim of that and they're going to they're going to run with it. And you're going to f- eventually it'll come out. So, um, you know, they're, they'll we're just about to go to break. But there was something Batavia um, about the movie that was kind of funny. So one, Batavia said that they had the reddest blood you've ever seen in it, which there wasn't a lot of blood, but when you did see it, it was like neon red. Yeah. And what was the other thing you said? Did I write it down? I don't think I wrote it down. You're going to have to tell me after the break. It was the screams. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at some point, so I was watching it and I was looking at some um, some um, camera footage. So I, there was a little bit of multitasking, but mostly I was in tune with the movie. And every time my eyes darted away from the movie, I felt like like there was this ah. And I would look up and like go back 10 or 15 seconds. Like there must be murder and mayhem. And no, you know, it's just like every time someone was bumped into, it was the, you know, biggest scream. And I actually kind of can remember that from older movies. Like that was commonly a thing. Like the screams were the big moment. Um, Then I also said to young Ben, perhaps they were also malnourished that, you know, every bump and, and every stumble was, you know, painstaking, but. So I think you defi- had a view on it. They were definitely uh, malnourished and all that because, you know, people weren't eating. But it was a piece of trivia for you. So did all the screams sound the same to you? I don't know. I don't know if I paid attention to it. That so there's a, so it's funny because in Hollywood, there's this thing called the Willem scream. <gasps> and it's a sound effect that's used in every single movie to this day. If they need a scream... They will insert it, and it's now become this joke within the movie industry where they will use the Willem scream, the W-I-L-H-E-L-M scream. The difference now is you can change it with sound effects so it doesn't sound exactly the same, but it's the, ah, you know, it's always the same scream every single time. You know what's so wild about that? What's so wild? One of my favorite, favorite, favorite artists it's it's probably the song that introduced me to him james blake he has a song called the willem scream it's yep. beautiful right <laughs> absolutely beautiful there's no screaming in it um but now like I, it's just it's you know everything's connected everything's connected <laughs> it's been used so i just did a little google search it's been used since 1951 yeah no, that's funny that scream has been over and over so on that note everybody let's take this uh quick station break and then we're going to come back <laughs> and then we're going to talk about what you can do now Mm-hmm. to help with your food security. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. So it's official. The next production that we do, I'm going to include the Willem scream at some point. It's going to be hard, but I'll do it. We're not going to get approval for for the James Blake song. So you're talking about the actual, the original then. Yeah, the original. Yeah. (laughs) But um, so... We've kind of now that we've continued to scare the pants off of everybody, which I truly do apologize for if you are concerned about it. But if you've made it this far, congratulations, because chances are you will not be one of the people in Soylent Green that are suffering. (laughs) So you are going to make a difference. You're a gardener and you're going to do it. Um, But we're going to talk about what can you do right now in July of 2022 to secure your food and this is you know it it seems like it could be an uphill battle but it's really not Mm -hmm. would you say well i mean i I think that um we're in a a sweet spot and i don't know if the opportunity is going to come as we move into this episode so i want to say this now before we dig in further we have come to a point where i mean I'm a, and I don't go on these limbs often. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that we have more access to things than ever before, right? You know, for sure in my lifetime, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say in my parents' lifetime and my grandparents' lifetime, quantity, you know, kind of um, um, uh, turnaround time and access. And I'm not talking about like computer chips that, you know, are, there's a shortage on. I'm not talking about like necessarily 2021, 20, 22 and so on. I'm talking about kind of in the last decade, in the last 15 years or so. Um, and for a lot of us, the sting is, is basically, I can't go out and get the thing that I want immediately. I'd gone to, um, 
to Best Buy where I bought my laptop from and my cord is all jacked up. You know how it goes, like, you know, laying on the couch, you know, sitting in the chair, it's all bent up. And so I have to rig it to charge my laptop, which is a pain. And so I went there because I have this whole, you know, tech program. And I'm thinking like, maybe I could just go there and get another one. And the guy said, good luck with that. <laughs> like, you know, he plugged in his cord and it charged which I knew it would my cord is all bent I can see you know this is user error you know and so he said I try Amazon you know like they don't even have the cord to the laptop that I bought two years ago which is you know generally there's a standard cord for this right 65 watt something something C something or another and I went and very I went technical the, description, by the way. I absolutely. like it. All of my descriptions are. <laughs> I went to the car and I started to, you know, I, I Googled it and, you know, I went to Amazon. You know, the biggest the biggest fear, interestingly enough, is once we get past the, it's not like it's not going to break my b- pocketbook to buy it, but I'm going to get it. And it's what if it's not the right one? Because, you know, that's always a risk here. And so but the idea is that I could have ordered it. It was on a Tuesday and got it on Thursday. Like, that's an example of how accessible most things are to us. Yeah. And there is, like, we, we got to wake up a bit. Right? Well, it starts to break down. I mean, we've heard for years about the global supply chain breaking down mm-hmm. and stopping. And, you know, everything's coming out of China and, you know, the Asian countries. Um, I believe that's what they're called. I'm not sure. But you know, when that happens, then what do you do? And I I believe that you go back into a time of, and I mean, this is kind of really the first thing that could kind of set us off for this is you go back to a time where you need to learn how to fix stuff Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in order to make it work. You know, maybe the answer is not always just going around and buying things, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Interestingly enough, I just read uh, yesterday that, you know, inflation is through the roof, right? They're actually calling for deflation to start kicking in because the stores, your targets, your Walmarts and stuff have so much stock Mm -hmm. because people will not buy it that it's going to bring prices down again. And but they can't get rid of it. So if you bought that cord and it didn't work and you call them and say, hey, look, this cord doesn't work. I need to return it. They're going to say, you know what? Just keep it. Mm -hmm. You can have your money back. Just Mm -hmm. keep it. We don't even want it Mm -hmm. anymore. Which is crazy to think about, you know, but that's kind of where we're at. So the whole complacency that people have about stuff being available right here, right now is, you know, once that starts to break down, what do we do? Now, the the key is so one more note on that and then we get into the like what we can actually do and all of the shows, television shows, all of the movies like they either start off where they're already in the thick of it. Soylent Green is a great example of it. Like it's all right. Like the sh- it's already hit the fan. You know what I'm saying? It's been decades and decades, potentially yeah. as long as the main character has been alive. Right. In a lot of the movies, sometimes you see the big blast that changes everything. Yeah. But a lot of times it's it's happened. Right. Um, and when we look at and again, this isn't this isn't the post apocalypse version of Batavia. There is that version, but this isn't her yet. Um, but it's this trickling thing that we're experiencing. Like we're not going to wake up tomorrow and gas is going to be one hundred dollars a gallon. Like and it was just three bucks a gallon yesterday. That's not how this thing works. Right. It's not going to be everything all at once. Right. We are in Preach the it. thick of it now. Preach right? it. It's happening item by item. Have you some of the shit that they're talking about, like, oh, there's a shortage on this. And it's like, I never even thought about it. And the yeah. urge to say, well, let me go buy a bunch of, you know, which is a whole trap. You know what I'm saying? So th- there is a ver- conspiracy version of Batavian that's entering now. Um, so I say that, though, when it comes to the trickling of it, it's, it's very easy to be caught asleep at the wheel. It's very easy to think, oh it's just this it's just the toilet paper you know oh it's just the baby formula you know like it's it's just this thing right it's just the tampons right like we're gonna move past it i haven't heard anything about those last three in probably three weeks right is it better resolved i'm just waiting to hear for the next thing you know so but um, you're not gonna hear about it 
That's the thing. So, Or you'll hear about it and then you won't for a while longer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it creates this thing where there's this up and down, this panic mode, which is a whole different conversation, which we're not going to get into. But don't feel like because it, don't feel like it's necessarily come and gone. Right. Right. You know, this it's there's a pile up that I feel like it's happening. No, it definitely does. It compounds and it's a mm-hmm. slow trickle. And I think it I think you're right. One day you don't wake up and it's like, oh, OK gas is a hundred dollars a gallon but one day you wake up and gas is up 50 cents Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one day you wake up and it's up 20 more cents Mm -hmm. and it's just a slow trickle you know and and we're all living it right now i mean everybody in the entire world is living that right now so there's that you know and i think it's just just slow enough and i think it's engineered to be slow enough for people to digest it a little bit easier Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm And do the best they can. I mean, I live in vacation land right now, not like the state of Maine, but people come here for vacation and I can see Mm -hmm. with my own eyes that it's not as busy as it has been in the previous years. It's not as busy as it was in the middle of a pandemic. So, you know, people are cutting costs. But there's I mean, there is I'm notorious for price comparisons not necessarily today when I'm purchasing I do that as well but if I purchase something on a regular every couple of years if I have access to it easily I'm going to look back to see how much I paid for it four years ago this is before our current day situation yeah and I am like literally nauseous yeah Amazon is a great example of that when they show you like you pull up your order your previous order and you can see the price for it then um connecting to the garden the fire rings that i use what's the price for it i think it's 69 dollars right now and that's the sale price for a 36 inch ring uh, fire pit that i use as a garden bed in the garden the sales price when i bought them back in 2019 was 39 dollars. there you go that's a big difference and that's just for a chunk of metal mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean that's crazy and i mean you know, so as we talk about what we can do now, I mean, I think that the biggest thing you can do now, which I should save this for the end, but I'm not, is continue doing what you're doing now, but stay vigilant. You know what I mean? Stay very vigilant about what you're doing. I mean, you're already right this second. You're already making a step in the right direction by expanding your mind and your knowledge. Mm-hmm. And maybe... um I'm going to go on a limb and sing making yourself uncomfortable by listening to something that's not totally ushy gushy like we usually do. But this series and what actually Batavia just finished talking about feeds directly into um, our one of our episodes about upcycling or free recycling where that's like, I mean, the sustainable part of a garden feeds directly into this because that will help all of this stuff. I mean, you know, I needed a, so I needed a stair to go into my, um, I didn't need, but I wanted a little step up to go into my shed. So do you know what I did? I used a piece of wood that I had cut and threw on the ground and that's a stair. You know what I mean? Like just something that simple. Like I was either, I had two options with that piece of wood, burn it, throw it away or find a use for it. And so I just dropped on the ground and now I have the perfect stare for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all of this is, so we talk about for me, um, a part of the reason why I grow some of the things I grow is to gain that experience. Right. right. Like I want to be proficient at a number of things in the garden and it's no different than, you know, building the stair, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the little by little, right? You're balancing things out and you are adding to your experience. And believe you me, going back to being able to fix it, you know, believe you me, it will benefit you. Um, and I was listening to a popular YouTuber and she talked about um, what happens if all of these things, all this food that I'm storing and prepping for, like, and if we don't hit a depression or a recession or both, right? You know, what happens? It's like you have food to eat, you know, like that's, you know, like that's the reality of it. You'll, you'll have a skill that you can use for the rest of your life. You'll have a skill that you wait for can teach someone else. Yeah. Right. Right. And so it's funny you brought that up because, um, I just went out to my garden 
yesterday and I harvested my first flush harvest of tomatoes. Mm. And so I was like, what should I do with these? So I'm going to go and I'm going to make a video about canning, pressure canning tomatoes. Mm. So because I feel like it goes directly with this, it's a skill and it's something that I'm passionate about. And even if you don't just jump right into it and do it and you just watch that video, you're already taking that step into that direction. Right. Yeah. So it's it's really important that we understand that, you know, hey, is there an investment to, to canning? Yes, there's an investment. And I'm going to go ahead on a limb and just say right now is the time to make that investment before it gets more expensive. Because and if... Remember, I, I track that shit. Yeah, so yeah. I'm looking at the price that I paid for my pressure canner and the idea of like how much it... So I must, must have bought mine, shame on me, in 2020. I will use it this year. Stop judging me. No, uh, so you I got mine in year. 2020. And I was you, looking at the price in 2021. I haven't checked it yet this year, but I know that my jaw is going to drop from it. You know, and the reality is you can't go back and get the 2020 price. That's gone. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, but know that the 2023 price is going to be more. The right. And to be clear, I be don't more. recommend buying a used canner. Just to be clear, you don't know what that was used for or how it was treated. But if you want to know the canner that we use, look in the link below in the Amazon link. A little portion will go to us, no cost to you. But that'll show, there's a section about canning that shows everything that either Batavia or I use mm-hmm. for canning. So that canner is in there. And yes, it does work well with glass top stoves. It's actually the only one that um, is, says will work with glass top stoves, which suck, by the way. I hate those stoves, but that's another <laughs> question. Another whole nother series about stoves. <laughs> <laughs> we need a whole other podcast about appliances. But, um, you know, it, it's one of those things that it's like, look, so what? If, even if you don't need it, it's like you said, it's there in the future. At any well, I, point, you can go in, you can crack that can and you can eat it and you can enjoy it and we can move on. I do think that you know, when we talk about what we can do now, I do think that um, looking at our budgets, right, and then taking a close look at the things that we've put off. And again, it's never my recommendation to go out and buy it all, right? Right. Um, But recognize that, and and, and you're going to touch on this in a bit, but it's... How do you know what I'm going to say? I don't know. I just kind of (laughs) know. It's uh, it's hard to predict what's going to like skyrocket or what's just going to be more expensive, you know, tomorrow, a year from now. Generally speaking, a lot of things are right. right? So if you have a and I don't want to say wish list because it almost sounds dreamy, but if you have kind of this buy list, you know, things that you want as a part of your garden experience, your homesteading experience, you know, start chipping away at that. Yeah. Right. And it is what it is. I'm paying more for stuff that I'm buying again this year than I paid a year ago. And it hurts, but it needs to happen. Right. Yeah. You know, so you got to keep on moving and get past that. Um, this is also a time to be um, conscious of the better buy versus what may be the cheapest because we definitely want to be purchasing things that are going to be more longer lasting. Right. Do you know how I operate in that realm? I never buy the most expensive mm-hmm. or the least expensive. I always buy middle range. And I will tell you this, everything that I've bought, like <clears throat> there's some stuff like when we go backpacking and stuff, I buy like higher end stuff generally. But every time I buy the more expensive item, mm-hmm. I always comment to my wife or anybody who really listen to me, which is usually just her. And that's questionable. Um, how pleased I am with the performance of mm-hmm. this certain item. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I can go out and I can get a pair of scissors from my son's school for elementary school and trim my garden with it. Or I can go buy a pair of trimmers. Mm-hmm. Ulti- either one will work. Ultimately, the trimmers that I buy that are made for it are going to work better. And that's just mm-hmm. a, a small example. But to be said, like, I mentioned that like the price isn't going to come back down. And if if we talk about the price of fuel for like t- a minute in 2000, you had Katrina hit. That was the first time fuel really shot up 
And they said, oh, it's temporary. It's temporary. It never went down. Mm-hmm. The only time it went down to the previous price was in the pandemic when nobody in the world was driving. Mm-hmm. That is the only time it dropped. Now that it's up, it's not going to go back down is my guess. And you heard it correctly, everybody, guess. So for all of these things, if you have something that you really want, like start thinking about the only thing that I would really stock up on, I wouldn't stock up on jars. I would stock up on lids because mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. reuse jars, but you cannot reuse the lids. Yeah. So that's the only thing that I would stock up on if I were you. Yeah. Um, I do think that canning becomes important. Um, I mean, while I haven't experienced it here in Chicago, think about, um, and this is just generally speaking, we want to talk about food security. We want to try to combat for our to start with our little homes, food insecurity, right? Think about the um, the uh, power outages in Texas last summer. Yeah, you know, Winter. and no, well, both, right? So there were the storms that you know late in the year, but there was the when they were advising people to keep their uh, their air conditioning down. Yeah. That was in the summer as well, right? And so either way, the point that I want to bring home is, and you've mentioned this, and it was just really in passing. The idea of I'm a big fan of freezing um, food. Like, I'm going to stock a freezer up. That's the way I was raised, right? Um, and I, for whatever reason, and maybe it was as we were preparing for these episodes, I was thinking to myself, I had this vision of power going out. And, and again, this vision wasn't like long term. And I was saying, fight the urge for, maybe this was like one of those um, almost lucid dreams, fight the urge from opening the freezer, leave it closed so it can stay it's cold as long as possible. I bring this up because obviously things that are shelf stable, you don't have to worry about things like you've gone without power, right? They will continue yep. to be safe to eat, you know? So. Right. I.e. drying and canning. Now, this isn't a preserving food episode. Um, you guys know that we are very big into that and we find it very important, but... That's not necessarily the only thing you can do, but it's a big portion of building yourself up and, you know, and knowledge and just dabble in it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just dabble in it a little bit, you know, as, and I, I mean, I would think of, you know, I keep a notebook, Batavia doesn't keep a notebook, Batavia keeps a digital some sort of something mm-hmm. that goes on. I don't know exactly Notes, yeah. how to describe mm-hmm. don't it. Don't hack me. Don't hack me. <laughs> <laughs> but keeping something like that is so helpful because each year we we come across something in our garden that is, is complicated mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we do research, right? So why not remember that research? Because I don't know about you, but I got a lot of stuff up in my nugget. I can't remember everything. Yeah, it just occurred to me that, let me write this down at, under my notes. I saw smoke coming out of your ears, so I knew yeah, something yeah. was going. <laughs> so we um, we do annual episodes regarding what we're going to do new, uh, you know, kind of what we've learned. Like we have, you know, kind of these topics that are pretty common, like, you know, in the work that we do, we're kind of common to think about for gardeners. I'm going to make a note of the, that was easy, you know, this year. Right. As we kind of wind down the year, like what were the things that were easy, that were prolific? You know, what was the what was the production time frame? I'm going to stop there because I don't want it to be some laundry list. Yeah. But it's a really good reference point to be able to say, all right, I need a bunch of a thing and I can point back to now. It doesn't mean that it doesn't change year over year. But I want to go back to see, okay, if it's if it was easy in 2022 and I go and plant those same things in 2023, was it easy then too? you know, you right. start to build on that? OK, yeah, it was. All right. So now I have some things that are um, more stable, if you will, in your garden. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the one thing I have to say about that is if you have aphids this year and you treat for aphids. And, and you learn how to treat for aphids and next year you get aphids again. Are you going to have to go back and reread or rewatch whatever you had to do to treat it? Because if you do, if you, oh, that came out weird. If you do, then you're not preparing for your food security. You need to treat them. You need to note why and you need to note how. And then you can go back every year and you don't need any access to anything else. As as much as I hate to say, you don't even need to come back and listen to us to treat your aphids. You'll just know how to do it. 
<laughs> and that's really the key to everything because the conveniences that we have, like getting products delivered to us immediately, going to YouTube, going on Google, what if it's not there one day? What if it's, you know, or incredibly bogged down and you just, you know, so slowly that you can't access it or, you know, whatever, what have you, the people can't afford to keep the websites up, whatever. What do you do at that point? You need to know how to do these things. You know, people grew food for many, many years without Google. This is a whole new world that we're in. Some of you listening to us have never operated outside of Google. You've always had that to fall back on. But some of us, and I don't want to admit, but some of us didn't have that at some point in our lives. And we functioned and we honestly probably flourished because we didn't have that crutch. And but on the flip side of it, for those that maybe only know a world where you can Google something, um, it is you're better for because you've had access to so much, yeah. right? You've had the opportunity to learn so much. Right. Um, and if you kind of, you know, take a moment, take a beat and recognize that again, it may not always be there for you, but let's build on that. Let's take advantage of that. Let's, you know, so there's some things like I stopped saving like favorites and stuff, you know, and, so this is true confession. I stopped saving favorites. It's like, I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to remember where I saved it. All favorites I'm going to do what? is. Hmm? Favorites what? Like um, on my phone. Like I stopped like bookmarking websites. things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like websites and things. Um, or I stopped saving it like onto my home screen or whatever. Because I never remember that it's saved there. All I do is Google it again. Yeah. Such a poor habit. Such a poor habit. I do the you same know. thing though. I, there's no point because it's going to come up every time I look it up. Mm-hmm. And I, I definitely have websites that I like to use. So I look for that website, but I look through it through a Google search. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, but what if Google goes away? We'd be in a deep shit, first of all, but that's a different, <laughs> that's a whole different, that's not even on this podcast. That's a, like a whole new actual <laughs> podcast. But, um, you know, that's the whole thing. So, I agree with you. Like if you've only grown up with Google, like you've learned a lot and I just hope that you've retained it. And if you haven't, you need to start retaining it. Look, Mm -hmm. I did it the other day. I had to treat my tomatoes and I had to go back and watch the exact same thing that I had watched before to relearn how to treat it. And I was ashamed of myself because I'm like, I need to practice what I preach. So I meet you and I, I will raise you that I have been so dependent on cover for my collard greens that, and I changed and started using, like I've used tulle fabric, T-U-L-L-E or tulle fabric for years. And so I changed that and started using this um, black netting, like bird type netting. And it it is, they're not ravished, you know what I'm saying? Um, But it definitely doesn't provide as much protection. It's pretty, um, enough months into this now, I've chased enough moths out of the netting to know like it's easier to get in here than it is a tool fabric. And so I have some damage. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, how in the fuck, like I never treat my collars really, not for that. You know, basically I handpick everything, you know, it's the the damage, the time for damage is so small, that window I can get in and get it out. And I'm like, how in the world did I used to do, like I used to, Right, but what was I doing? You know what I'm saying? And so it's that moment of, you know, in some cases, if you don't use it, you lose it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, I could call my buddy Ben and say, "What was the mixture that we were talking about using?" Um, so anyway, I, I do think that um, I feel like, and you normally say this around this this time of the episode, I feel like this isn't as much about what can you do exactly in your garden. I think everything we've talked about can apply to kind of your garden experience, you as a gardener, you know, and so I do want this episode to be received in that way. You know, we are going to get into kind of dirt vegetable seeds in the next episode you know what I'm saying yeah. um, but I think this is again one more episode of like creating this kind of baseline well, right? what you if know, the Thule fabric what if the Thule mm-hmm. fabric company goes away yeah yeah or a tool and, whatever and, and now and, I feel stupid when I say it I mean one of us is gonna 
I, I don't think either of, one of us is wrong clearly right clearly um, <laughs> <laughs> and if it's me i'm proud to be wrong how's that <laughs> well you know what I've, I've sat i've heard you say it i've said to myself it's wrong but you know i've said it as tool fabric and you hear me and so you choose to say it differently and the funny thing is this could very much be the zone conversation like i'm not going out on a limb i'm just saying this is the way i say it i went to the italian ice place yesterday and i gave my name and um anytime someone speaks a second language um they commonly pronounce my name as batavia yeah and so as i stepped back and she pronounced it as batavia i asked her she's like yeah and so um and then I thought to myself, like, wait, what is the, my name really is, Batavia? <laughs> <laughs> I called my mom later on and she confirmed it's Batavia. <laughs> That's however you want to say it. But, I mean, it's 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 important to think about all of these things. I mean, we, we laugh and we joke, but in all honesty, like, these are serious questions to be answered and thought about. I would I would say personally it's we want to come out of these episodes th- this garden season the next garden season just being a bit more uh, conscious as gardeners uh, and, and again uh, I feel like it's very woo woo you know but you know just being a bit more conscientious about what we're doing while we're doing it what we're using yeah the T-U-L-L-E fabric is a good example of it's not even made for that no we're not so, going to go down the spelling road we're just going to say it <laughs> so that fabric's not even made to be you know in the outdoors to the exposure right yeah so i basically which is a part of the reason why i was trying to figure out if there's something else i could use although i have a whole roll of it so it's going to be used but but see that's a responsible way for you to take that on too because you recognize one that it's not supposed to be used that way Mm -hmm. two you recognize that it's not going to last if you use it that way Mm -hmm. and three you recognize that it wasn't sustainable to use mm-hmm. it that way. So you started experimenting mm-hmm. with something else and stepping outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And that's really important for this conversation is just in that, in the Thule fabric discuss- <laughs> discussion <laughs> is that all of that came out of that because that shows that Batavia is thinking about these things and mm-hmm. moving forward and she's willing to take a little bit of damage because yeah. she's armed herself with the knowledge of what to do with the damage and the reality of what happens when you get the damage. There's a whole lot going on in Thule fabric. So, I hate Thule fabric. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I have a bunch of it that I bought last year. So if you see a video of mine, you see it in my garden, don't come for me. I'm I want damn a tutu sure for Christmas. Use the rest- hmm? I want a tutu for Christmas though, yeah, if you right? got a whole roll of it. I'm damn sure you're going to use the rest of it, but it's exa- it's all of those things. And I'm not in my head because you're preaching to the choir. That's exactly it. It's not, plainly put, it's not sustainable for the garden. I have to buy it every year, you right. know, and I only, if, if I don't buy it every year, it's because I bought enough to get me through two years, right? Like <laughs> that's not something that, that you can, should, should be looking at long term. If nothing happens in the world, it's still not, you know, the best decision. I do think it, what it does, does though kind of the you know if you if you've had a couple of bad years when it came to your brassicas if you're new to gardening i do believe it could provide like some reprieve you know sometimes yeah. it's just and I, b- you know, I believe that based on the steps you've taken and the video is cut out so i don't know if we're talking over each other but i'm gonna keep going is if you are are experimenting without it right now that there is a possibility Within three years, three years is the key number here, that you will move away from it completely and use something else. So I I now have Batavia's um, video feedback. Did I I cut you off bad? Uh, You cut me off, but I wrote to you, take it away, right? (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, it may take Batavia three years, which is okay. And I think it's okay three-year joke but oh i didn't pick up on that okay yeah no you didn't (laughs) so um it's it you know part of and this may be a misconception i have about this but when you're trying to do something in the garden or in life in general let's just take let's step out of the garden for a minute it's okay to not be completely sustainable all Mm -hmm, at once mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's okay to get comfortable with something with the intention and the action moving forward to get there but you've got to 
learn how to do it. And sometimes you need that little bit of time. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got Thule fabric at my house that I've never even used. I still got it. Maybe I'll send it to Batavia when her role runs out. Yeah, man. Keep keep the party going. I um when it comes to that as an example, I didn't I didn't have the mindset if you will, to consider when I, a friend suggested it to me and, and she's a super duper responsible human being. Right. You know, but it didn't occur to me initially that it wouldn't last more than one season. Yeah. As I got through that first season, as I was going through it, I was realizing, Oh, there's a tear here. And I'm like, gosh, you know, and then it was originally, and it's it's the naivete when I look back, because I've, I've been using this fabric for like maybe five years or something. When I look back, it was like, oh, you know, I'm kind of clumsy. I'm rough with things, you know, like the opening and moving it and all like it tears easy is the way I used to describe it, you know. And then you look at it and you look at your new role and you look at what things look like in October when you pull it off. And it's like, that just isn't tears. This is wear and tear. This is the sun beating down on it. This is, you know, the wind beating down on it. This is, you know, the, the rain and such. And we're resourceful and it's great to be able to use things that aren't necessarily meant for the garden, but know that they come at a cost quite literally, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, I stop it today if it was like twice the price, three times the price. This is something that has been pretty consistent with pricing. It's the cost of it too. You know, and so I think that it's it's all it's an actual situation, but it's also a metaphor of sorts. You know, so what do you do when the thing that you you're dependent on becomes too costly? Yeah. You know, and I mean, I do have one more thing that I'd like to state. And, you know, we opened up this conversation and we were talking about fertilizer, Mm -hmm. um, the availability of fertilizer based on the uh, war with Ukraine and Russia. Um stepping away from being as dependent on fertilizer is important too. And there's a simple way to do it. Do you want to say it or do you want me to say it? You can say compost. I don't need to say it. Compost. (laughs) Composting, using compost, whatever. Um, I, I think it's really important. It's, it's a, I mean, it's the studies show and it's all there and it's, it, it check marks all of the boxes. I know people are like, oh, he's talking about compost again. And yeah, we are because it's part of, I mean, we literally just told you 20 minutes ago that com- um, fertilizer is harder to get this year. And the thing is too, and the thing that you have to remember, it may not be harder this year, but it may be next mm-hmm. year. There may be a lag. And how it affects us, too. That's something else that we have to remember. So even if this this conflict resolves itself, the effects will still be felt for a period of time afterwards as they catch back up. And that's Mm -hmm. something that we need to remember as well. So, you know, I I depend more heavily than I should on fertilizer. I don't solely depend on it, but I definitely use it a lot. So maybe I need to as well step up my compost game, which is killing me to step it up, but, you know, step it up, be more mindful. And, you know, I really started composting heavily like three years ago. I started my journey in where I made my decision to like, Hey, I'm going to start using compost that I make in my garden. And each year I've stepped it up more and more and more and gotten more resourceful about how to do it. And that's really the key because if, I, I'm going to go on a limb here and I like going on a limb, so it's cool. But if the food dried up today, the majority of the people listening to this podcast couldn't handle it, including myself. Mm-hmm. Now, some of us may be better off than others, but if the food dries up three years from today, the majority of this podcast will be ready for it. And that's the key. <laughs> There's um. I was I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, the listener shout out because she did a video of a recipe of the day. Uh, Chelsea, appreciate you. And she was talking about I think what she cooked. I, f- I didn't. I missed it. It, it was um, it was that uh, I don't remember what I called it, but it was the combination of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, zucchini. It was like a like a stir fry. You know, okay. topping. Um, and it looked so good. I was so hungry, um, but. She, I was watching another video of hers and she um, talked about how they have chickens and how much they were producing. And I, I think she's in Michigan. And she um, said, 
I, when she said something like, I've not added any additional light or anything. Cause you know, my curiosity is like where it gets really, really cold, how do chickens survive? Then I thought to myself like, gosh, I don't even eat that many eggs, you know? But then I thought again, kind of future focus. Well, you know, when you start looking at being more self-sufficient, gosh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to grow meat. I'm, I'm a long way from that. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how important chickens could be, you know, for me and my future, you know, garden and homesteading and such. It could be um, the single most important thing you've ever done in your garden. I will say I will go and stand proudly on that thin, thin limb. Um, yeah, we get a dozen eggs every day from our chickens. We have one that's very prolific. Um, and so I'm going to answer your question real quick about the cold. Somebody explained it to me perfectly mm-hmm. when I first started raising chickens. I was living in New England. It's cold. You know, anybody mm-hmm. who lives up there knows it's cold. And if you don't live up there, trust me, it's brick. But um, I said, look, it's getting cold. What do I do with the chickens? She says, nothing. I said, what are you talking about? There's a foot of snow. She's like, think about it like this. Chickens have no personal space. They, you go in there and you look at them in the coop and they are nose to ass all night long. <laughs> they are just all up on each other. Like they do not care whatsoever. They keep e- their, themselves warm. Mm-hmm. And if you put a light in the coop, because in the winter time, when we get less light outside, they actually stop laying. Mm-hmm, so people mm-hmm. will put lights into the coop. But what it does is it significantly reduces their lifespan. Mm. So they will lay more, but they won't live as long. So it's best to just kind of go through. And that's part of that whole seasonal eating thing that we do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we realize like, hey, there's going to be a period in winter where we're just not going to get any eggs or we might get a couple. I think it's going to be a community garden um, episode. And I think we may need to record it like after this one, because I want to talk to you a lot more about seasonal eating. I've been giving it a lot of thought, a lot of thought. Uh, Dude, I'm your man because I've. Mentally, I created it, but I know I didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> like in my head, we created it on our own. We didn't read about it, though. You know what I mean? Like we just can't kind of came up with we definitely 100 percent did not create it. But, you know, it was one of those things where we've been doing it so long that there wasn't a lot of information about mm. it before and it just kind of made sense. But yeah, we can definitely, yeah. I'll let I you do, drive that one. I do believe that there is absolutely a connection to being more sustainable as well as food security, which it seems counter because you're limiting yourself, but it absolutely is a connection to that. But yeah, um, it's all about going back to the ancients, you know, mm-hmm. so remember that term. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, yeah, <laughs> But <clears throat> look, we we've gone over and I really have to give you a uh, I have to give you something from a listener and that would be the recipe of the day. If you guys want some backyard gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance and we hope you enjoy. We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners. All right, everybody. So this one comes from a very loyal and um, uh, patron. Anna and she and she's in zone 7B by the way I love that she put that in her name Um, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's her zone if not it's code then I apologize ahead of time but uh, she get I'm gonna read you verbatim what she said to me uh, what she gave us so she goes my favorite recipe if you can call it that is garden fry Growing up, we had several large gardens, and we all know how exciting it is when the first squash or couple pods of okra are ready, even though it's not enough to cook for the family. This is where the garden fry comes in. Cube up everything that's ready, squash, okra, peppers, green tomatoes, whatever, and we usually added an onion or a potato if we had one laying around. Toss everything together, lightly dust with flour and salt and pepper, and then pan fry it until it's done. Every bite is a surprise of different flavors. Perfect for the beginning or the end of harvest when you have a, only a limited quality. And I I had definitely shouted out to her and I was like, I love it. It's super simple. 
and I can see quantity, right? Like I, I feel like she could be my soulmate, garden soulmate, garden soulmate. soulmate, one of them. Like that speaks to everything there is. Like that's my style of cooking. Yeah. I mean, y'all know how I do. I mean, look, I made a damn cooking show about it. Like, I do easy. And I mean, hell, we've given out so many recipes on here. But one step I will do is if you um, want a little bit lighter version, you can use um, cornstarch instead of flour. I I use that a lot for my green fried green tomatoes. But it's it's perfect. You know what I mean? Because how many times do you go out to the garden and you get like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one zucchini and you're like all right what am i gonna do with this one zucchini mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. so it's just throw it all together or a plants that just you know maybe you only planted one and you're like gosh it's not i'm not getting that much out of it yeah. my pea sweet peas which i wouldn't i mean maybe it could work i um i didn't plant as many as i wanted planted them later but luckily they produced but i mean you're talking like a handful is what i'm going to end up with and so i was making this delicious um it's like a shrimp scampi. Um, but it started off with garlic scape dressing, which is a whole different conversation. Um, and I was just like, you know what? It's a pasta. I'm going to go ahead and get some sweet peas. You know, yeah. there's a whole pasta uh, recipe with peas in particular. I can't think of it right now. And I'm just like, it's perfect. I also learned for this variety or this time of year or whatever have you. Um, I picked them at different sizes and the first ones I picked, I'm like, these really aren't sweet. These are just like the green peas. And then I would pick them a pot that was smaller. I'm like, Oh, I got to get in here quick and get them smaller. Yeah. Right. Cause they were actually sweet at that point. Um, and unfortunately I don't remember the variety I planted, but <laughs> wow, you're a big, big help there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, Cause I remember the same size last year and they were sweet last year, but again, any number of factors could, could play into that. Um, but yeah. Garden it's, fry. I, c- I couldn't love it more. Well, it's it's one of those things, too, where I, I have to get on my high horse for a second and say, like, just because you have a garden doesn't mean every meal has to be made of a certain piece of produce out of that garden. It is a OK to just use random stuff mm-hmm. and not make some gourmet meal. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, um, Yeah. So that being said, everybody, try that recipe. And when you do, thank Anna for it because she did a fabulous job giving us a simple recipe. Um, Everybody, if you haven't watched Soylent Green, go watch it because in about two seconds, I'm going to spoil the movie and um, the whole thing. And I want to say that don't be scared of what we talk about. Be prepared. Be ready. And start being adventurous in your garden and taking notes and learning and really just enjoying it. Um, Your knowledge is your power for all of this stuff. So when it comes down to it, it's just us. It's just us gardeners. You know, Mm -hmm. ain't nobody going to come save you. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody remember, if you're going to remember anything, first of all, you can come support us, Patreon, YouTube all that other stuff. Um, We're going to have canning videos coming out on YouTube soon. I've made my decision. I'm going heavy because I'm tired of sweating. So there's that. I'm going to (laughs) sit in my house and make them. Um, Mm -hmm. But remember this. Soil and green is people. (laughs) See ya. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens TV. Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. Over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy.
We want everybody to have a garden and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram and we will share it with our listeners.